Hello there! In this video, you learn how vectors can be used to describe geometric figures like lines and planes. At secondary school, you learn to represent a line in a two-dimensional plane by its starting point and its slope. Here it is y equals 1 plus 2 thirds times x. You see, if x equals 0, you get the starting point and the slope is 2 thirds, namely, if you go one step to the right, starting from a point on the line, you find a new point on the line by going two thirds up. Now translate this line such that the starting value becomes zero. So the line passes through the origin. And let's now use the fact that you know vectors to describe this line in terms of vectors. Thinking a bit about it, you realize that the points on the line are all endpoints of vectors that are scalar multiples of 1 2 3rd. So, we can write the vectors on the line as t times v, where t is a scalar. If you want to return to the line we started with, all you need to do is translate all vectors on the line through the origin over the vector corresponding to the starting point. In this example, the starting point is 0, 1, so the original line can be described as r plus t times v, where t is a scalar. This is called a vector equation of the line. And the vector r is called the support vector, and v is called the direction vector. In three-dimensional space, you can follow exactly the same procedure. Taking the support vector and the direction vector from the picture, you see that the line has vector equation u equals r plus d times v. Now that you know how to represent lines in space, let's turn to planes in three-dimensional space. What is a suitable way of representing those? When you have two vectors u and v, you can construct a plane spanned by these vectors. How can this plane be represented? First, you have to realize that the vectors start at the origin. Since they are lying in the plane, this means that the origin itself is also contained in the plane. Because of this, the direction of the plane is completely determined by a non-zero vector orthogonal to the plane. Such a vector is called a normal vector. Let's denote it by n. And let's think about a way of finding n. So, we are looking for a vector perpendicular to two given vectors. But this is exactly what we did in the lesson on cross products. If you take n to be the cross product of the two given vectors, it is orthogonal to these vectors by definition. Fine, you might say, we have a normal vector, but how is this going to help me to find a nice equation for the plane? You're completely right there. But we also had a lesson on the dot product. And from this you know that if you have a vector n and you want to characterize all vectors orthogonal to n, you just take all vectors that have dot product zero with n. So, coming back to our plane, you found that the vectors w in this plane can be described by the equation n dot product with w equals zero, where you computed the vector n by taking the cross product of the two given vectors in the plane. This is called the vector equation of the plane. If you write this out in terms of the components of the vectors, you get n1 times w1 plus n2 times w2 plus n3 times w3 equals zero. Now, what to do if the origin is not contained in the plane we wish to represent? In this situation, you cannot simply follow the previous procedure, because the points in the plane are not endpoints of vectors in the plane. But let's see how we can modify it slightly to find a solution to the problem. Let's denote the vectors in the plane by u. And now pick a point in the plane and denote the vector with its endpoint by r. Then translate the plane to the origin by subtracting the support vector r. So the translated plane contains the origin, so you know how to derive the vector equation. Writing v for a vector in the translated plane v prime, it is n dot product v equals zero. 
all vectors in the translated plane are of the form u minus r, because you translated each vector u over r. So you found n dot product u minus r equals zero. You can also write this equation as n dot product u equals n dot product r, where the right hand side is just a scalar, because these are two explicitly known vectors. And here it is, the vector equation of the plane with normal vector n. A typical problem you have to solve, to start with in the exercises following this video, is to find the equation of the plane through a given point with a given direction. Sometimes you have to do some thinking about how to find the direction, but here is an example where the direction is already given. In view of the terminology you just learned, this means that in order to solve this problem, you need to determine the support vector and the normal vector of this plane. It is not hard to see what these are. Now let's set the components of a vector u in the plane to be x, y, z. Then the vector equation of the plane is the dot product of n and u equals the dot product of u of n with r. If you write it out in the components of the vectors, you get n1 times x plus n2 times y plus n3 times z equals the inner product of n and r. Again, realize that the right hand side is just a scalar. For our example, you get minus y plus z equals 1. This is called the linear equation of the plane. So this is what you get by writing out the inner products of the vector equations in terms of the components of the vectors. As you can see, the normal vector is immediately visible in this equation as the coefficients of x, y and z. Thank you for watching.